Welcome to the No More Sex Shame video series where we are interviewing individuals from around the world who um, have worked through issues around sexual shame for sexual behaviors, pornography use, um, and especially folks who have tried various strategies to get help for their uh, sexual behaviors and found that those strategies, those, those helpful strategies actually ended up causing more shame and sexual harm. Uh, here is Mark here to talk with us about um, his uh, experience of seeking help with um, uh, concerns around his pornography use. Mark, thanks for doing this. Um, why don't you start by just telling us about how you ended up being concerned about your pornography use? So I have been watching porn since I was about 14, and I mostly watch just normal conventional genres like lesbian porn, interracial porn, the same stuff that my other friends were viewing. So I never felt any concern about it for the first five or six years. But then suddenly when I was about 22, I came across a new genre uh, called transsexual porn. And I had never seen it before. I, I didn't even uh, know transsexual people could be like that and de depicted in such a way in porn. And I was quite surprised because I found it very arousing and I, I never expected that I would find it arousing. And yeah, I thought I would just watch it, watch it once and never come back just because I was curious, but I kept going back and ultimately it was maybe like half of the time I would go to a porn site, I would go watch transsexual stuff. So I became very curious why I had developed this taste and I went to Google and after following a few links to Google, I came across a site called um, Your Brain on Porn and that's where my worry about porn addiction started. So when you started researching this, um, you know, what did you find? How, and, you know, how did that make you feel, the stuff that you saw on that website, you know, your brain on porn? So that particular website, it looked very uh, scientific. It also had the TED Talk with the owner attached, which had, I think, seven or eight million views. So I thought it was a credible site because I didn't see any, any text from Bible or religion. So I thought they were, they were credible and they were out there to help people. And what they said on the site was that porn, um, when you watch it too, too often, that it can desensitize your brain or even change your brain, uh, that it can cause addiction, erectile dysfunction, morphic sexual tasis, all very ominous, ominous things. So Scary I, became, stuff. <laughs> I, became, I became very worried because there was um, a subsection of the site that said, I'm straight but attracted to transsexual porn. What, why is this? Um, and I read it though and they said, like, I expected to read that it's just a, a normal taste and that I didn't need to be worried. That would have reassured me. But instead I read about dopamine and addiction and like when you watch too much porn, you, your brain isn't responding to earlier genres anymore and that you need more hardcore, more deviant, more extreme stuff to get off. And I became very scared that I was really addicted and if I didn't stop my behavior that I would only be able to get off to transsexual porn and if I had sex with a girl that I would develop erectile dysfunction or that I would only be able to, to finish during sex while thinking about transsexual porn or other, uh, other extreme porn genres. So I became, yeah, I, be I became very, very worried. Yes. How did that, um, you know, make you feel about your sexuality? I mean, you know, we, we talked at the beginning about, um, you know, the sexual shame that really makes these problems kind of worse. Um, where did that, where did that go for you? You know, the, did it, did it help you control your sexual behaviors or, or uh, you know, control your use of pornography? Well, at first I thought it could help me because the, like the, the owners of the site seemed very reasonable and they saw it scientific and they linked to studies, external studies. So I thought, yeah, I have to give this a go because I, I cannot go in like this and I need, to, I need to change. But when I tried, to, when I tried their techniques for what, what they thought would make me feel better, I, I noticed that I only got worse because like, they proposed to limit masturbation and to eliminate porn use. And even also eliminate other online sexual stuff like looking at YouTube videos or 
or other things and I try that but I noticed that the more I try to avoid sexual imagery and the more I try to avoid or limit masturbation, the more anxious I got, the more depressed, the more I got the feeling that there was something very wrong with me. And I kept thinking about the addiction label and they, they portray addict, uh, porn addiction as a disease and a brain disease in particular. And I, I had the feeling that I, was, that I was sick, that I had a disease or addiction that needed to be cured, that I had to reverse the the addiction related brain change that they keep talking about mm -hmm. and they said it, it could it, it could take months to reverse the the addiction related brain change so i became i was skeptical but still my my anxiety about it was so overwhelming that i felt like i didn't have any other choice but to stop watching porn but the more i tried to stop the more anxious i got and eventually i would always relapse after a week or so because i felt so anxious and after relapsing, what they call relapsing, I, I felt that I was overestimating the dangers of porn. And I felt a little bit more uh, relaxed and re reassured. But then sooner or later, I would return to, to the transsexual porn and then the vicious cycle of, of self-doubt, anxiety, um, depression would start over again. And then I would believe it more in the porn addiction model. And this went on for for many months and ultimately I became so anxious that I, I couldn't function at work anymore. I, I lost my job because I lost my focus at work because I, I became so, so anxiety ridden and I even lost, eventually I lost the ability to sleep and I became so paranoid, depressed, even, even suicidal. And yeah, I, it was really a nightmare for me because I, I became so anxious that I was hospitalized for, uh, for a week or so. So it was, yeah, I was very, surprised at this because I, I never expected this to happen so you were hospitalized not for porn use but you were hospitalized because you had become so anxious and suicidal over your fear about being a porn addict and and, and the shame you felt about that yes that's exact, exactly correct yes it's worth noting that when I even before I became so anxious um, which led to my hospitalization I had gone to a few psychologists psychiatrists and all of them said that like being attracted to um shima porn or, or transsexual porn is um is nothing to be really worried about and that the porn addiction model of the site was flawed and that i, I didn't need to be worried so I, I didn't ask just one psychiatrist but i went to a, a few and psychologists and they all said the same that it was that i was like, exaggerating and that, and that it's not not something to be worried about but Unfortunately, my I have a, I have an anxiety disorder. I have obsessive, obsessive OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. So my anxiety was so strong that it, it was very hard to like get the thoughts about porn addiction out of my mind. Whatever specialists like doctors said to me. Mm -hmm. So the so your autism and and tendency towards anxiety. Um, led you to kind of over focus on and, and kind of become very uh, fixated on this idea of, of porn addiction. Yeah, that's very true. It was the only, well, I was still seeing my friends, and then when I was seeing my friends, I felt a bit less concerned because I felt like there are still many other things to pay attention to, not only porn addiction, but whenever I was alone and not with friends, I kept obsessing about porn addiction, and it was very it was very annoying for me because I felt like I wanted to watch porn in a responsible way a few times a week without having to worry that it will wreck me or cause addiction. So I really just want to watch porn as the vast majority of men do a few, uh, every now and then a few times a week. But I was so anxious that I, that I just couldn't do it. And it was very, it really lowered my quality of life a lot. Yes. Looking back now, what do you think was, was going on for you around porn? Um, you know, how are you feeling about porn now? Well, I think I had a very um, rigid or black and white view on sexuality and also the, the stigmatization of, of like different, I call it different interests like uh, transsexual porn or um, like maybe female domination or what, what sports, for, for example, the stigmatization or, of such fetishes or paraphilias, I think that's a real problem because by stigmatizing those tastes, they are um, like porn addiction advocates are 
acquiescing shame and they are using fake like pseudo brain science to hide their like they're not using real medical arguments they're using pseudoscience to hide their moral agenda against porn i think that's very perverse and unethical because like people people like me and not it's not only me i've read many other people on the internet who are very like worried about their taste and then they go to these porn exchange forums and they only get worse and their anxiety increases their depression increases and so i think the real problem isn't addiction or brain changes or that that's not the real problem the real problem is that such tastes like transsexual porn are being stigmatized uh, for no reason because in reality it's not dangerous to be to be to watch that stuff it will not cause addiction it will not cause um like it will not change your sexual orientation you will still be able to like enjoy the sexual sexual taste you you've you had before so it's all a lot of scaremongering and i think that's very unethical because it's really this kind of rhetoric is really harming people mm. how do you how do you feel now um you know you've pulled away from kind of the porn addiction concept and the your brain on porn site and and how you doing with all this now well so after a long while of obsessing about porn addiction i came to the conclusion that porn isn't the real problem and the real problem were like underlying is issues but not not porn itself porn is not uh, the real problem i think you could compare it to people who like for example watch movies all day it's not it's also an enjoyable activity but it's not the movies itself that's problem it's just for example the, the person being lazy or the person it's the person itself that ha that has problem it's not the product whether it's porn movies whatever uh, form of entertainment is not the problem and now so i i changed my mind i know i i i still watch porn maybe maybe two three times a week Mm -hmm. And I don't feel any shame anymore. I still watch transsexual porn fairly often, maybe not exclusively, but maybe 50% mm -hmm. of, of the time, 50% other uh, types of porn. But w whereas in, in the past, I would feel very ashamed every time I watched transsexual porn, I would promise myself I would never watch it again. And uh, I felt like I could never live, live like that, watching such things. But now I, now I realize that, you know, watching it can be, can be positive and it doesn't necessarily have to be a problem it will not affect my my uh, my my orientation and no i would even say that if i if i would go on holiday to brazil or thailand places where there are lots of uh, transsexual people and i would i would meet someone um, i would i would meet such a person i would not feel like any shame engaging in sexual activity with them and i think that's very that's that's very positive i feel like i finally feel free and sex positive again and no more um no more shame ridden and anxiety it's it's much it's much better now so reducing the shame and the self-hatred that you were feeling about those desires actually gave you better control over it um that's true and i also i also want to make clear that i never had anything against Transsexuals. The thing that was really worrying me was was that they, like the European porn site was, uh, and other porn addiction um, advocates are portraying this as some kind of disease, as brain changes. And you know, when you reach such things, every person that is concerned about health would, would be anxious. So I never had any, never in my life had, had I had any problem with transsexual. I was even already interested in transsexual before I watched porn because I remember watching a documentary. About Thailand, where there are a lot of so-called ladyboys, and I, I just found it intriguing. And this was way before I, I found porn. So the only thing that made me concerned was the the language, like brain changes, addiction, mm. disease, things like that, and also the idea that I would be develop erectile dysfunction or that mm. my taste for like transsexuals would become exclusive, and that I wouldn't be able to have sex with. Um, genetic girls anymore that we would only be able to orgasm by thinking about like fetish porn when i was having sex with people that was what really concerned me so it was not out of hatred it was just the the portrayal of porn addiction as a disease that needed to be like eliminated that that was what was really causing me anxiety and, and harm yeah. 
You know, and that's, uh, your story is very consistent with research. It was just published actually by uh, Brian Willoughby and, and uh, Leonhardt from uh, Brigham Young University here in Utah in, in the United States. And they showed that it is actually people's fear of being addicted to porn and the fear of being rejected or having problems related to uh, the, the porn use, the, the self-label of being a porn addict that increases people's shame and leads to them withdrawing from other people and other relationships and then having problems. But the problems come out of the shame and the anxiety, not from the porn use. And so, you know, your story is really consistent with that. I'm glad I'm glad you're doing better. I'm glad that folks told you, um, hey, no, that you know that, that porn addiction kind of concept isn't isn't right. This isn't the way sexuality works. Um, and I'm really glad that you're you know learning to accept yourself and and uh, uh, you know identifying that you know interest in transsexual porn or transgender porn is not uh, is not anything unhealthy. That it's just part of the sexuality spectrum. Um, some people are interested in that and some people aren't. But there's nothing wrong with the people that are. Um, well, you know, Mark, thank you for sharing your story. This has been really, really helpful. Um, is there anything uh, that you'd like to kind of close with in terms of sharing with viewers um, who might also be going to some of those sites um, where they're, you know, told to be afraid of their sexuality or their porn use? Yeah, I just hope that my, um, my interview here can help other people who are struggling with similar issues, especially um, shame issues, but also people who struggle with anxiety and they they also read things about porn addiction online. I just I wouldn't want them to be to go through the same hell that I went through, and I would I would be very happy if my interview here could prevent them from from being harmed by porn addiction advocates. Because, like I said, I I, I wouldn't even what I went through. I, I I wouldn't even wish it on my worst enemy. And I think I think the, the world would be a much better place if like places like um uh, like people who like transsex porn they, they it will be more accepted because now it's not only like porn addiction advocates who stigmatize such things it's only it's also in general population because for example i i talked to my friends about after like a few years because i didn't dare to mention it initially but i i mentioned my like my desire for transsexuals to some of my friends and at first, they also didn't really, even though they are quite open people, but at first, they also didn't really understand it. And they didn't understand why, why I could find it attractive. And they didn't understand that certain people go to, uh, like, Asia to marry transsexuals. It just, it's not only poor addiction advocates that shame, who, who should I call it, a, a typical sexual interest. It's also society in general that still has a lot of, yeah, I think, I don't know, black and white thinking about sexuality. And I hope in the decades to come that a lot of uh, society, society's views on sexuality can change so the world can be a better place for everyone. Every, everyone can feel um, good in their own skin, whatever their sexual interests. Mark, I hope so too. And you know what? I think conversations like this and people like you being willing to come out and talk about these issues um, are how we get there. Thank you.